Happy 4th, but it may not be as happy when isolation, sheltering, and quarantine have taken the place of parades, concerts, and fireworks. At least we've still got cookouts. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Join me today as I show you how to celebrate safely on SoFlo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Hello, Taste Buds, and happy Independence Day. Welcome to our home here at the Goya Kitchen at JA World as we celebrate the 244th birthday of America. You'd have to admit it's maybe the strangest Independence Day of all time, or certainly the strangest in our lifetime. No parades, no pie eating contests, no fireworks. So today I thought it would be appropriate to give you recipes and show you how to do the 2020 edition of the fourth which can be celebrated safely and deliciously. So let's get cooking. I love crudite platters, crudite being raw vegetables, but I think you should mix in a little bit of cooked vegetables too. We also have this kind of fun idea to give everyone their own mini crudite. I have already blanched snap peas, which might be my favorite thing on earth, as well as some radishes, which they're already washed, but I'm keeping them gathered with a rubber band right now. I have some little tiny marble potatoes that have already been cooked in water, so they're really really tender so you could just mush them in your fingers and they're delicious um, we've got some grape and cherry tomatoes jicama something a lot of people don't think about jicama is usually delicious raw with lime and chili and salt but also goes really well with this recipe some carrots I thought it would be kind of cool to introduce an Asian vegetable a long bean I happen to be growing these beans right now too. And we're about to harvest in the next couple of days thanks to Ready to Grow Gardens, which I don't know if you saw the segment, but they came and, and um, basically put in these gorgeous planters in my front yard and we've been eating happily from them for about a month and a half now and they're just delicious. So I thought I'd show you how to cook a long bean. I know they're a little bit weird looking, but they're really just kind of like green beans. They're just really long and they're kind of fun. Um, to give people, you know, something that maybe they've never seen before. So I'm just gonna cut them right at the tip because they start getting a little kind of brown looking. And I have a little bit of salty water going. I'm just going to, mmm, they're so fresh smelling. Um, place them into the water just for, I don't know, like a minute. We'll see how, what it takes to make it nice and tender. All right, I have a little ice water for that to stop the cooking process once it comes out. I also have a little bit of um, endive or endive lettuce, which I love. You basically just separate the leaves, and this is for great dipping, too. So speaking of dipping, let's make probably my all-time favorite sauce for dipping vegetables. We're going to make a huancaina, which is a Peruvian yellow chili sauce. Not too spicy. You can make it spicier by the amount of aji amarillo or yellow chili from Peru that you add. So add a little bit of extra virgin oil. We're not going to cook it much uh, into a pan. I've got a little bit of um, garlic cove just kind of separated in half and some shallots that are minced. Add that to the pan. We are not looking for color. We're just looking to soften it a little bit. And over here, we're going to add to our blender. I've got cream cheese that is at room temperature, so it's nice and soft. Some evaporated milk. Saltine crackers or soda crackers, which I kind of just crush in there. The ají amarillo. So I use paste of ají amarillo, which is a yellow chili, like I said, from Peru. You can find this paste at pretty much every single grocery store in South Florida. So let's see how we're doing over here. All right, so. The shallots and the garlic are just starting to turn translucent and that's enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And it can be hot, it can be cold, it can be room temper, it doesn't really matter. Into your blender. And let's go ahead and puree. So depending on how thick or thin you might want it, you would either add or subtract the amount of saltine crackers. 
This is a little too loose for me. So let's throw some more salting crackers in there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw eight more and see how that comes out. Okay, that's much nicer. And as it sits, it sets even more. I had this fun idea that you could actually give everyone, if you go out to a park, even if you have a get together with family at home but you're still social distancing, I thought it was kind of a cute idea to give everyone their own little crudite. So go ahead and pour if you like the Huancaina idea. If not, Green Goddess or Ranch Dressing both work beautifully. And if you want this or any of those recipes or any of my recipes, you can go to SoFloTaste.com and find them, just so you know. So this is what you can do. You can grab a skewer and fill it with these cooked marble potatoes, which by the way, goes really well with Huancaina, as do potato chips, as does everything else in the world. So you can kind of just stick that like so. A couple of endive spears, like so. Let's take those long beans out of the water and put them in, how gorgeous they are, into ice water. It just, this is kind of like a statement, right? But think about if you were to put maybe one of these, you can actually like tie it a couple of times. It's kind of fun. And then put that into your jar. How cute is that? And let's take a couple of skewers. Let's see, let's do some, some snap peas. Oh, these young carrots are gorgeous too. I basically leave the tops on them. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. And that whole carrot would go into one of these beautifully as well. So you've got snap peas, you've got the carrot, which if you wanted, you could, I guess, cut it in half, but I think it's kind of lovely. So set this on a table and just think about how beautiful that would be for a very small get together of less than 10. And of course, social distancing. So how cute is that? So come right back. I have a couple of more great ideas for you to celebrate the 4th that would go alongside any barbecue or on its own. Come back soon. You're watching SoFlo Taste. That shows you have good taste. I'm design expert Elena Capra. Join me next for a great designer home tour on Soflo Home Project. Now, back to Chef Michelle. Welcome back to Soflo Taste. We are here at JA World in Coconut Creek, and in a normal school year, it's buzzing with students. For information about JA World, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to the fourth at a distance. So the next dish that I thought would be a delicious side dish would be a farro salad, a beautiful ancient grain, a very green grain, and a very healthy, delicious grain. You basically follow the instructions on the package. It's basically just boiling in water until it's ready. I like to simmer it nice and slow personally so that they don't really like explode so much. By the way, this stuff made in a risotto is like heaven. It's so good and it has a real good bite to it. So if you hate farro, which um, I think I live with somebody that hates farro, you can easily use, instead of this, some orzo, some couscous, some Israeli couscous, quinoa would be delicious, any of those things instead. But I have farro, so let's make the farro salad. So we're gonna start with that. Have you ever had raw corn in the summer? There's nothing more delicious than Florida super sweet corn raw. It tastes like candy, you don't even have to cook it. If you and your family hate raw corn, then by all means saute this or blanch it. I would saute it actually with a little bit of olive oil, but I love it just as is. I think it's delicious. Some diced cucumbers. So this is English cucumber. You don't have to seed it and the peel is really nice and thin. So it's an edible peel. I don't think that people use radishes enough. Most people just buy them and slice them up in a salad, but you can actually small dice them and add them to anything and they give you like a spicy little crunch. 
grape tomatoes. These are just halved and we use the heirloom variety that has all the different colors in it just because it's pretty. Scallions sliced really nice and thin. Again, if you all don't like raw, you can saute these along with the corn. It softens up a lot. And then herbs. I've decided to go with rosemary, which is really yummy in this type of salad, and some Italian parsley. So let's go ahead and chop them up separately because the rosemary is really stiff and you'll want to cut it a lot finer than you cut the parsley. So using a large knife, just kind of go at it. Nobody wants big pieces of rosemary stuck in their teeth. All right, once you've gone fine enough, go ahead and add that to your salad. That was about one sprig of rosemary. And then finally, the Italian parsley, which I'm just gonna roughly chop. I don't personally think that it needs to be too fine for this. All right, so roughly cut parsley. And finally, we've got a little bit of lemon. You can also use lime, but I personally think with all the flavors that we have going on here, lemon is your best fit. Gives it a really fresh flavor. And with all the heavy foods that we're eating for the fourth, I don't know about you, but I usually go a little bit heavy with my proteins. And so I truly feel like a salad like this is kind of a, a relief, if you will, to my body. So let's add some olive oil to the top of this and some salt. You know what, I'm gonna use um, crunchy big Malden salt, the sea salt for this one. And some black pepper. And finally, you know those same cups that we used for the, sh the crudite? I've got those here so that we can do this at a nice social distance. Pre-prepare all this stuff these salads, by the way, this would marinate beautifully. So if you want to make this a day ahead and have it ready for your family or guests, by all means, you can do that. So go ahead and place it into, this is obviously like a little jelly glass, like so. And I would say that this would be another great beginning or side dish to your 4th of July festivities. Come right back because I have one of my favorite desserts going in a jar. You're watching SoFlo Taste. That shows you have good taste. to the Goya Kitchen at JA World and SoFlo Taste. Here's Chef Michelle Bernstein. Welcome back to Happy Fourth of July and Happy Birthday America. We are now going to make a pudding in a jar. Actually, we're gonna make a coconut pie in a jar. Even better. So, how do we do that? We're gonna first make coconut pudding. So, we're gonna heat up a pan and add equal parts of half and half and my favorite coconut milk, which I always get at the Asian markets. And by the way, whenever you use coconut milk, you always wanna shake it before you even open it. And I shake it for a good couple of minutes to make sure that I'm getting it at the right consistency. I've got some coconut toasting. I'm gonna pull that out of the oven real quick. Perfect timing. These are just some simple coconut shavings for the top of our pie. All right, so in this mixture, I'm going to add sugar and salt. Always want that balance. And we basically just want that to heat up a little bit and let that sugar melt. Now here I have egg yolks and a little bit of the half and half just to get it a little more wet. Mix that up. And once that's really well whisked, we're gonna add our cornstarch to this part. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of pudding these days. There's nothing better and easier to make and throw it into an individual container and hand to people that you like a lot. It's a really nice gift. It stays cool in your fridge 
and delicious for like five to seven days. As a matter of fact, it does last for a while and it's delicious. All right, so once this is well mixed and this sugar has melted, go ahead and start tempering. So to temper means to bring up the temperature of the liquid that's in this bowl. So by doing that, we are going to take a ladle and as you whisk, you add the hot liquid in. And always keep moving it to make sure that your eggs don't scramble with the hot liquid. And it already smells like yummy coconut. And once you feel like the liquid here has matched the warmth of the liquid here, you are safe to go ahead and pour that back into the pot. And keep whisking until it comes together to form a nice thick pudding. So my temperature is on about a medium low. I'm gonna grab a little towel. All right, so don't walk away. A lot of people walk away at this point and that's when you realize that you have scrambled eggs in your pot rather than delicious pudding. So it doesn't take long. It only takes a few minutes to come together but you, if you walk away, you're gonna get really upset with yourself. So always have a strainer ready over a bowl so that you can strain any pieces of egg that might have overcooked in your pot. And we have a little bit of butter and vanilla to finish. So there's different ways of making coconut pudding. If you want, you can add bits of coconut or maybe the shredded kind of coconut into your pudding after it's made to give you a little more of um, like a different texture in your pudding, but I personally love creamy, just beautifully creamy pudding. So I decided on not adding any added texture or shredded coconut into this mixture. You've heard me talk before about nappe, which basically means that it glazes um, or sticks to the back of a spoon. And that is what you always look for when you are making custards like this. So I think I'm ready. Let's go ahead and dip in a spoon. And sure enough, we have stickage. I'm going to go ahead and strain through the mesh strainer. Then using a rubber spatula, go ahead and push it through and ignore everything that stayed on the top of it. And then to finish, like I said, we're adding the butter and the vanilla. All right, everybody, so we have coconut pudding. Remember, when you wrap pudding, you always wanna stick the plastic wrap to the actual pudding, not around the bowl, because I don't want a skin to form on the top. So come right back and I will show you how to make a gorgeous pie in a jar. You're watching Soap Low Taste, the number one food show in all of South Florida. Welcome back to our 4th of July show. So let's go ahead and finish up our pudding or pie together. I have a little bit of shortbread. You can get cookies. You can buy um, any type of shortbread or of course you can make it and you want it to cool off. We have it in a little um, closure bag. So a little plastic bag. Just crush it up. Or you can make streusel or of course you can always use um, toasted graham cracker. So. Look how cute. We put little bows on our ball jars. Let's go ahead and scoop out our shortbread cookie. Just so you know, if you wanted to, you can find your favorite gluten-free cookies and crush those up because pudding is made with cornstarch. It doesn't have flour, so you could actually make this gluten-free if you wanted to. All right, there we have our bottom. And then for the top, we have our gorgeous coconut pudding. <laughs> Yummers. And I'm only gonna fill these about halfway with everything so that people can really dig in. Plus, they'd be, it would be too much anyway. And again, a great way to give this to friends. Some unsweetened whipped cream because that coconut pudding is rather sweet. I love it. And then finally, this toasted coconut. 
for the top. And how cute is that? Throw this right in the fridge and then just think how adorable it is. Put a little bow on the top of it and then go ahead and close this off. And here is your little 4th of July present. I hope you've enjoyed today's 4th of July show and that you appreciate the fact that we didn't start the show with piano music and someone saying, in these uncertain times, the cruise and my job is to entertain you and for you to take some time off from the other things pulling on you in your life. So I hope we did that today. Next week, I'm doing a show with a topic I haven't done since the cows came home, a non-dairy recipe show. So next week, join me for Milk Was Made for Baby Cows here on Sofla Taste. Next up on Local 10 is Sofla Home Project. Time to check in with design expert Elena Capra. Good morning, beautiful. What's up? Hi, Michelle. Happy 4th of July. I love going all out for holiday celebrations like this because it makes it more memorable and special for the entire family. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we show you how to go all out with patriotic themed decor for your 4th of July celebration. So taste buds, be smart, be safe, and be well. And remember, please support local growers and restaurants. They all need it. And I'll see you next time here next week. Goodbye, good health, and very good taste. Hooray, USA!